What makes a sailboat a sailboat? It's the sails and the ability to harness the wind and use it to glide across the water. What makes it possible? The mast and the standing rigging. These crucial components are the backbone of any sailboat. There's no place for guessing and messing around with this vital equipment, unless, of course, you broke your mast underway and you need to jerry rig something. We could have just gone with a big brand company, but we were looking for something with a different profile that could really fit our needs and be fewer than the average mast on the market. Our focus shifted to finding a system adaptable to a wide range of conditions. Our need for an equipment that can withstand the rigors of distance expedition, far from immediate assistance, is paramount. We also wanted to be able to step or unstep our mass by ourselves, just the two of us. So today, we pull back the curtain and bring you along for a visit of the workshop that is currently crafting our mast and standing rigging. We will also go through the list of what we consider important and could make a significant difference in the long haul. Today we're going to find out how our mast is going to be built. We're right now at Clack Coast Par in Oakville and I'm going to drop some parts that needs to be installed on the mast and yeah, we're going to go meet uh, the team here. Hi, Tim. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm good, and you? Not but too bad at all, thank you. So that's our mast. This is your mast right here. Yes, it is, Jennifer. This is what we've done here. We're creating a brand new mast using a K35 section. And in this, we have your standard clackle mast head, which gives you two forward shivs as well as two aft shivs and the ability to carry two spinnakers, all halyards working independent of each other. As a newest updated, um, as a new form of mass, what we do now is we refer to this as our updated head, which means that you have a third bale, which allows for a solent stay and or an additional safety attachment should you need to go up the mast. Luckily on yours, as we move along in the production, we're gonna have two steps located right here for easy platform should the head require any maintenance, i.e. the electronics as these mast heads are maintenance free. Working down the mast, some of the options that only we do are compression tubes located at the high stress areas, those being under any rigging tangs as well as any spreader bases, all welded in tubes for reinforcement. As a nice little feature to your project, we're given an inner four stay with the ability of two jib halyards. That will allow you for quick sail changes or should one become jammed or prematurely worn out, you have the ability of a backup, which is a nice option to have. Working down the mast, all components are welded on. Nothing is bolted, riveted, or attached otherwise. This ensures a strong and reliable fit of the end product. The nice bonus to this is that any stress high load points are then transmitted to the tube and equalized through the length. Not one single component takes all the shock loading. It works together in uniform. Working down the mast, you have your typical layout, combo light, deck light for navigation purposes. Many lights can be sourced and added as required. Some of the other nice little features would be halyard uh, wear bars. These are simply decorative but yet function. All holes are filed and sanded by hand to ensure a silk smooth fit that you will not prematurely wear out your halyards. That is nice feature. Again, as we work our way towards the bottom of the mast, here we have again, any high load components are welded on, hand cut in a bandsaw and fabricated and finished by hand to give a, a sleek smooth look then welded on, again, equalizing the pressure throughout so that not one part can fail. At the bottom of the mast, you will see that there is a large wire exit hole. This allows for any cabling to exit the bottom of the mast, as well as you'll notice there's two tubes within the mast to allow for electrical conduits. 
This uh, gives us the ability to segregate any electrical wires from any moving halyards internal. Adds a nice finish to it overall. So as we move through the project, there will be additional hardware that's put onto this. One of the examples would be the Spinnaker track right here. This is approximately a seven foot track that will be added to the mast along with control ropes, turning blocks and rope jammers to give the ability to set the pole at any given height while sailing. With the mast step, all halyards will be returned to the cockpit on this particular project. A few days later, I returned to Clacco with Pierre. We got to see our spreaders, and the boom was just going to get started. Tim also gave us more information. We talked before about the, um, the extrusion is thicker in the high load areas. Everything is drilled, tapped, and machine screws. Okay. We do not use rivets or cheap fasteners, self-tappers, anything yeah. like that you will never see on our mast. You've mentioned that you're going off the Great Lakes. Everything will be sequel flexed. Okay. okay, so anywhere a screw contacts the mast, the threads will have uh, sequel flex on them, as well as the component that touches it. Okay. So in this case, uh, this has been powder coated. This is the layout okay. for your uh, camera. Okay. So the base itself will not, but the screws will be sequel yeah. flexed. So as an example, underneath here, will be sequel flexed okay. and then bolted through with nylock nuts okay. on the other side. There's many things we haven't mentioned yet about our standing rigging arrangement. For example, we're going to have single line reefing system just because we want to bring everything back to the cockpit. The other thing is the spinnaker track. You saw on the video earlier that we are going to have one. We don't need it as much for our spinnaker. That track is going to be part of our stepping and unstepping mast system. We're really looking forward to show you how it's going to work. We're stressed anxious to use it for the first time because it's one thing to design it but that's another one to actually try it especially for a mass that's 45 foot long everything we looked so far was 28 29 30, even one at 30 and one at 30 they had problem raising it so now at 45 feet roughly five to six hundred pounds i don't know it might not work so we don't know yet some of you really like numbers, so our lower and vertical shrouds are going to be 516 on a binge. All the other shroud forestay, backstay are going to be a, a quarter. The inner forestay, that's going to be a Dynema cable, should be 38 of an inch. The total mast length is 45 feet 1 inches and the boom length is 14 feet 8 inches. The mast is almost completed. I saw it the other day. It was painted. Looks really, really good. So what was really important for us for our standing rigging? There were three main reasons. There's multiple one, but three main one. So the first one would be uh, to be self-sufficient. The fact that we're only going to be the two of us on the boat at all time, it's very important that either one of us can run the entire boat by himself just in case something happened including the rigging yeah so everything needed to be bring back to the uh, cockpit the other thing was to remove the runners just to make it easier for one person to uh, manage the boat that was achieved with the new standing rigging and the third thing is a big one it was the ability to step or unstep the mast for that reason actually there's two sub reason <laughs> on the need so the first one would be being self-sufficient we always always talk about being self-sufficient and being able to mass and unmask your mass is, is a big thing like stepping your mass normally you need a crane or you need some lifting system with the tabernacle that we're installing on the boat we're going to be able to do it by ourselves without requiring the use of a crane also having a low air draft makes possibility to go a different place sometimes just being under a bridge or going into a riverbed in Central America or South America being able to lower your mass makes a big difference yeah so a lower air draft and because of our lifting keel also yeah. uh, lower water draft 
we're going to talk about our companion way. I don't know if you're going to be able to guess exactly what we're going to do. You might have an idea because with the frame now installed, it kind of give it away. But we're going to have a special functionality that we are incorporating into the design. And that one, we're pretty sure you're not going to guess what it is. If you think you can guess or have an idea, please drop a comment below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't make that uh, next episode.